Uh, good morning to everyone. Thank you for being here. I am Joel Ocasio Marcano. I'm Deputy Director of the Procurement Division for the CDBGDR and CDBG MIT programs. In this pre proposal meeting, we are going to discuss the request for proposals, number CDBG DR MIT RFP 2024-01. This is for Information Technology Consulting Services. I would like to introduce our staff. Here we have uh, Jose Colon, Technical Specialist, and Karen Canales, procurement official. Both are from the procurement division of the programs. Also, we have Erika Gavan from the Federal Compliance and Recipient Management Division. Any questions submitted in this meeting will be answered in writing and will be published in an addendum. Any information provided in this meeting does not change the terms and conditions established in the request for proposal instructions. Uh, this meeting is recorded and will be available in our CDBG, DR and MIT YouTube channel. All procurement processes shall be conducted in accordance with the terms and conditions established in our procurement manual available in our website. This manual, this manual guarantees full and open competition and fair treatment of all persons or entities involved in each procurement process. As I said, the procurement manual is available in our website and is incorporated by reference and made an integral part of the request for proposal. Uh, this is the agenda we are going to follow this morning. And now briefly, I'm going to explain some of the details. Um, of the scope of services of what we are looking uh, for in, in this RFP. As I said, this is a summary. So there are other many details that you have to be, uh, that, that you have to look for them in the scope of services and the RFP instruction. Uh, the peer DOH is issuing this request for proposal to procure information technology consultants capable of providing a broad range of IT professional services for both programs. First, we have uh, some requirement for the key staff we are requiring. The proposal need to secure all personnel required in the scope of work. Uh, Pure DOH expects the select proposal to provide competent and fully qualified staff. Uh, if possible, to fill uh, some positions with the same uh, proposed person for, for each position. So one person can be filling two or three positions. Uh, this accordingly to what we are expecting and we are requiring in the scope of work. Some of the positions we are requiring is a project management, project manager, who has a bachelor degree in business management and five-year experience, a senior network consultant uh, with a bachelor degree in computer science or related and seven years of technical experience, an associate network consultant with a bachelor degree of computer science or related and two years of experience. This can be uh, substituted by four years of experience, the, uh, the bachelor degree. We will require also a senior IT consultant with a bachelor degree on computer science or related and seven years of experience. Also an associate IT consultant with a bachelor degree on computer science or related and two years of technical experience, which can substitute the bachelor degree with four years of experience. Uh, we also will need a senior security consultant with a bachelor degree in computer science, an IT integration specialist with a bachelor degree also in computer science, and this can be substituted with a associate degree with four years of related technical experience. A technical writer is also required with a minimum of associate degree and two years of experience or four years of experience. A training specialist, also with associate degree in computer science, with two years 
of technical experience, which can be substituted with four years of experience. A database and reporting specialist with a bachelor degree in computer science. And this one must be have a certificate with well, a certificate of CompTIA A+. There are other positions we are requiring. You have to read our the scope of services to fulfill all the requirements in these positions. This this position does that I mentioned has all the requirements. So be uh, very diligent and read our scope of services so you can get all the details in the positions we are requiring. As for the service requested. We are required, uh, this is this is not a taxative list of what we are uh, we were we requiring from the company who will be selected. These are examples of our needs. So you can have an idea of what we are requiring. We will require uh, works on networks, data warehousing, electronic data interchange, groupware, client server computing, workflow and imaging, document management software, reporting software, cloud storage, uh, operating systems, especially in Windows, network networking principles, communication protocols, and network configuration. Also, we, we require that you have a knowledge of computer hardware, service, and network devices, uh, database management, uh, best practices of security information, visualization technology as VMware, uh, must, be, must, must have a professional that knows how to script, writing script for automation processes. Network design principles and architecture, including OSI and TCP IP topologies and models. Also, we'll require uh, professionals to handle different network devices, such as routers, switches, switches firewalls, and wireless access points. Uh, we require that you know the network protocols, such as TCP IP, DNS, DHCP, and SNMP. Network and system monitoring tools, network visualization technologies, and experience in deploying and managing wireless networks, including Wi-Fi standards. As I said, this is not a taxative uh, list. There are other there, there can be other uh, services we will require. For details, please read the scope of services. For service level agreement requirements, the objective is to ensure timely and effective response to various categories of incidents and service requests. These are some examples that we are required for this SLA, which uh, if we have a critical incident, we will require an encore response within two hours of this incident. For minimum priority incidents, also we require two, uh, two hours from the incident report. For low priority incident, incidents, we will require a response within four hours to report. As I said, there are more details in the scope of services. Training, proposal shall provide fully trained and experienced person required to perform any work on this scope of services. This includes training necessary for keeping personal, a rest of industry advances and for maintaining proficiency on equipment, computing languages, and other operating systems that are available in the commercial market. Uh, we, we are requiring personnel fully trained. So this, this will be part of what we are requiring the scope of services. And for the deliverables, uh, for task orders issues to the contractor will be state the specific deliverables related to such task order. The proposal shall outline the types of deliveries and timings they produce in performing the services being procured through this RFP. Is uh, we must we will we will like to make very clear that the contract will based on specific task order requested by us. Now I will leave you 
with Karen, which will continue with the presentation and other requirements to submit our the, uh, your proposals. Karen. Good morning, everyone. Some of the important dates for this RFP are the following. Submission of questions and requests for clarifications on or before February 15, 2024 at 5 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time. Responses to questions and requests for clarifications February 22, 2024. Proposals due date by electronic submission March 12, 2024, 9 a.m. Atlantic Standard Time up to on or before March 24, March 14, 2024 at 4 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time. The RFP documents are available for download at the CDBGDR website as presented on screen. Responses to all proposers' questions will be answered by addenda and will be posted on the CDBGDR website. All documents related to this acquisition process, including the addenda issued by the Puerto Rico Department of Housing, are and will be available for download at the CDBGDR website. All proposers are responsible to monitor the CDBGDR website for any issued addenda in this RFP. Proposals will be only accepted by electronic electronically. Proposals submitted after the prescribed deadline will not be allowed. The Department of Housing will neither require nor accept physical proposal submissions. If a proposal is submitted on paper and electronically, only the electronic submission will be considered for evaluation. Proposer must submit the proposal via email to the cdbgdr-procurement at vivienda.pr.gov within the closing date and time for proposals as established in section 4.3 of this RFP. Either documents directly attached to the email or links containing required documents will be accepted. Examples, OneDrive, iCloud, Dropbox, Google Drive, WeTransfer links, or similar. In all scenarios, the procurement division will confirm the receipt of the documents. Now we will continue with Jose with the evaluation criteria. Good morning. The evaluation committee will evaluate responsive proposals according to the following criteria listed in order of importance. Critical, professional qualifications and experience of the proposer to successfully perform the services required in this RFP, as evidenced by the successful implementation of relevant services of similar scope and complexity, preferably in large complex public organizations like state government and federal entities professional qualifications and a specialized experience of the proposed key staff personnel as evidenced by relevant experience to the role proposed. Quality of the proposed approach and its relevance to the services described in this RFP, including implementation schedule and understanding of the PRDOH goals. Sorry about that. Important. Capacity of the key staff and the ability to commit adequate time to effectively perform the services in the role assigned within the required time frame. This includes the availability of backup professionals in case of illness, turnover, or other loss of personnel. Pass and fail. Financial stability of the proposer and his capacity to effectively perform the services. Reference. Level quality and relevancy of participation by Section 3 Business Concern and MBE WBE registered Puerto Rico business. Price proposal, reasonableness of overall price, allocation of effort, and overall value offered. Now, I'm going to talk about the SAN. Proposers and first year subcontractors must be registered in the system for award management, also known as SAM at the time of the proposal submission or initiate the registration process right after the proposal submission. For more information, please visit the SAM website. There is no fee to create, renew, or update your registration. Awards will only be issued to entities that are clear, that are clear and not ineligible for awards of a contract due to suspension, debarment, or hot imposed ineligible denial of participation. Now, we will leave you with Erika Caban from the Federal Compliance Division to explain the federal compliance requirements. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the PRDOH Federal Compliance Team, welcome to our 
compliance overview. This presentation is prepared in English. Sorry, this presentation is prepared in English, but if anyone is in need of the presentation in Spanish, you may request it using the protocols for this art. The agenda for today will cover a brief overview of Section 3 and how to qualify as a Section 3 business. It will discuss compliance with MBE and WBE business participation, reporting compliance, and a brief overview on FHEO compliance. The procurement package contains language that offers contractors the ability to seek a preference. Please remember to use the references and templates that are made available and that we will be discussing in this presentation. Proposers seeking Section 3 bonus points should provide their self-certifications and sufficient evidence for how they qualify as a Section 3 business. The Department of Housing offers a template on their website. Proposers who are seeking MBE or WBE bonus points should provide a copy of their MWBE certification to provide evidence of this status. The certificates provided should show the dates and indicate that they are currently active. The procurement package contains sections that speak to the applicability and the requirements for MWBE. Within those sections, you will find helpful links to online resources that are made available, such as the policy guide. Let's talk about Section 3. The Department of Housing makes available a Section 3 policy guide on their website, both in English and in Spanish. Contractors must read and implement activities as applicable and necessary. They also are responsible for their subcontractors assuring that benchmarks are met. Let's talk about the definition of a Section 3 business. A Section 3 business refers to a business concern, meaning at least one of the following criteria, which is documented within the last six months. The business is at least 51% owned and controlled by low or very low income persons. It could also be a business that has at least 51% ownership and controlled by a public housing resident or residents who currently live in Section 8 assisted housing. It could also be a business that has over 75% of the labor hours performed for that business over the prior three month period by Section 3 workers. Section 3 tools. Section 3 self-certification forms help you uncover if workers and businesses can meet the income thresholds required. HUT also offers a 4736A and C form to be able to be used as a template. We will now turn our attention to minority and women-owned business compliance. There are various regulations that call for the inclusion of minorities and women business enterprises. 2 CFR 200.321, as well as Executive Orders 11625, 12138, and 12432, establish the participation of MWBE firms, which seek to ensure that when possible, contracts and other economic opportunities funded in whole or in part with federal housing and community development assistance are directed to minority business enterprises and women business enterprises. The Department of Housing has established an MWBE policy guide. This is available on the website in both English and Spanish. You can access those documents using the link on the slide. Let's look at what a minority business enterprise is. An MBE is defined as a business which is at least 51% owned, operated, and controlled on a daily basis by one or more American citizens of the following ethnic minority and or gender and or military veteran classifications. African American, Asian American, 
Hispanic American, Native American, Hasidic Jew, persons with disabilities, and other individuals who can prove social and economic disadvantage. Women Business Enterprises, or WBEs, are businesses that are at least 51% owned and controlled by one or more women. The owners must be U.S. citizens or legal resident aliens whose business formation and principal place of business are here in the U.S. or its territories, and whose management and daily operation is controlled by women. The MWBE policy guide will identify that there are goals which apply to professional services, purchasing supplies, and construction contracting. There is a total of 20% minimum participation goal. This 20% is comprised of 10% for women-owned businesses and 10% for minority-owned businesses. Contractors are expected to perform good faith efforts for contracting, subcontracting, and purchasing opportunities of $10,000 or more during the life of the contract. Let's look at the MWBE Utilization Plan. This tool helps you compile data for your subcontracting. It helps you identify what needs you may have. It helps hold discussions on creating supplier and contractor listings, and it provides awareness of meeting the goal for the contract and tracking. You can use the link on the slide to go to the website and download the plan template. Let's review how you should complete your MWBE utilization plan. The Department of Housing utilization plan template can be used throughout the life cycle of your contract. Completing the plan is pretty easy. You should read the general instructions in row three and complete sections A, B, and F from the document. Complete the information requested in the yellow cells. When we talk about certified minority or women-owned businesses, we are referring to those who have filed applications with federal entities such as SBA and others that you see here on the slide. Businesses who are certified can provide proof of completing an application process to be officially recognized as a certified minority or women-owned business. If you are registered as an MWBE, you should provide your valid certificate or other evidence in response to this RFP. In this section, we will be discussing how to complete your efforts and quarterly reporting. In order for you to report your efforts, the Department of Housing provides a tool. This tool helps you document and identify how often you are seeking interactions with Section 3 businesses and MWBE businesses. The quarterly reporting form allows for you to share and report your data with the Department of Housing. This allows the agency to fulfill oversight responsibilities and monitor the progress throughout the year. The Department of Housing's quarterly reporting form allows for the user to capture multiple compliance areas all in one Excel form. Section 3 data is collected. MWBE data is collected as well. FHEO information is also documented within the report. And finally, for those who have construction projects, there is a report for Davis-Bacon Unfound Workers Efforts Reporting. Awarded contractors will be responsible for reporting four times a year on April 5th, July 5th, October 5th, and January 5th. This ensures that you are meeting benchmarks and documenting your efforts. The quarterly reporting template is also available on the Department of Housing website. Let's briefly discuss FHEO. Your RFP package will also contain a model contract which outlines fair housing and equal opportunity areas of compliance. Contractors are responsible for ensuring compliance with federal civil rights and fair housing through their contractors, subcontractors, and so forth, ensuring that all necessary efforts are being made. The Fair Housing Act 
and Sections 109 and 504 prohibit discrimination against the following protected classes of people, race, color, national origin, religion, sex, age, familial status, disability, gender identity, and sexual orientation. The Fair Housing Act is part of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. There are many executive orders, laws, and statutes that govern the non-discrimination of protected classes to ensure equal opportunity for individuals in accessing federally funded programs. Equal opportunity is afforded to protected classes through a number of these federal laws and executive orders. The Department of Housing has published policy documents attending FHEO as well as language access plan. These policies must be implemented by contractors and subrecipients. They are publicly available online in both English and Spanish. You are encouraged to click on the links and access the resources available. Thank you for attending today's training. We hope you found the material helpful. Please remember to direct all your questions through the established protocols for this procurement. Thank you to the procurement team for allowing us to present this material. I will stop sharing the presentation so you can continue with the session. Thank you very much, Erica, for that information. Uh, we have reached uh, where is the end of, of this pre-proposal meeting. Uh, we, are, we have been taking notes of your answers that you're being uh, sending to us in this uh, presentation, during this presentation. We will answer them with other with the other questions you send us by email, by publishing an addendum. Um, please note the due dates for all uh, for for all our for all the steps on the RFP. And that will be all. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attendance and have a good day.